Hey, Alex Goad here, best-selling author, coach, and small business expert, back with another installation of 10X Your Life. Today, to talk about the first of the five of 10 principles of ascension for the 21st century. So I'm only gonna to talk to you about five of them in this video, and we're gonna keep it short. Just keep something in mind. These are not hopes, they're not wishes, they're not dreams or wishful thinking, they are principles, meaning that they're kind of like laws. They're immutable, they're untouchable, they're unbreakable. And if you get these things right, then you can get anything and everything that you want out of life. This is the, literally the manual or the blueprint for how to do it. And if you're not getting the results that you want, take a good hard look at this and don't tell me that you're doing all of them right and you're not getting results because I don't believe you. So that said, let's get started. The first principle, and the most important thing that I say all the time, I say it kind of differently, I'm going to uncover this for you. The first principle is truth. And the great German philosopher, Frederick Nietzsche, said that the measure of a man is how much truth he can tolerate. Because truth hurts. Truth puts us in conflict. Truth challenges our beliefs, our feelings, our emotions, and our conception of the world. But you know what? Maybe that's a good thing. The more you can challenge those things, the more you can find integrity with yourself and with others and with the art of doing, the further you can go. Now, I, the, this is particularly important in today's world because the entire planet seems to have been re-engineered in order to make us small, and commoditized. They've laid out all of the traps with the fake news, the fake media, the fake this, that, and the other, the useful idiots, the smiling and grinning lies that we find everywhere around us. The desire all of, the, of all of this is to make us small and to make us commoditized so that we cannot be extraordinary. So principle number one, truth, or as I like to say it, don't believe a goddamn word they say. You got to remain independent in the way that you think, which means that you have to be willing and able to challenge everything, including what I'm telling you right now. Number two, courage. Courage is a big one. And just like truth, it's being dissuaded by so many people because courage can often create conflict. Courage is what you use to challenge the status quo and the things that are there the way that you don't like them. You know, the American president, Teddy Roosevelt, said this about courage or something like it. Essentially, that what counts is not the critic, nor the person who criticizes or who points out where the strong man stumbles, nor where the doer could have done the deed even better. Rather, the person who matters is the man in the arena whose face is marred with dirt, blood, and sweat. And what does that mean? Well, let me, let me just tell you two things that happen once you get out of the, 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 the stage, get out of the spectator area, and onto the playing field. It doesn't even matter if you score the touchdown. It doesn't even matter if you do that well. Just getting down there on the playing field does two incredible things for you. Number one, makes you into a doer rather than a spectator. And you know it, and everybody that's still up there in the spectator area knows it as well. So once you go back there among them, you're already been, you've already been designated as a leader. You've been on the stage in front of everybody. You've been the one that had the guts to get dirty, to bleed a little bit, to sweat a little bit. You know, that pain is actually kind of like a trophy that the more of it you go for, the more of it you can tolerate, the easier it all gets. And that's actually the second thing that happens when you get into the arena is that you realize that you had built it up to be that big, but it's actually just that big. And that, or, or maybe it was that big, and maybe it was you who was that big, and now you're this big. So courage is one of the magical elements that the minute that you take an act of courage, it's hard to predict how many incredible and positive things are gonna start happening in your life because you have the courage to act honestly. All right, number three, 
I got another little quote for you here. This one is from the movie Miracle that has the American hockey team going up against the former Soviet Union's hockey team. Now, the Soviet Union had the most powerful hockey team probably ever assembled, and they'd always beat the Americans, and they'd always beat them very soundly. And that's why the name of the movie is Miracle, because nobody expected it to happen. But the coach in the movie has them work extremely hard, and in fact, he has them work a lot on strength and stamina and the ability to keep going when everybody wants to quit. And he says this very telling thing, which is that it's the legs that feed the wolf. It's the legs that sustain the hunt. And the same thing is true when we want to accomplish extraordinary things in our lives. If we want to have the best relationships, if we want to travel the world, if we want to become millionaires or have businesses that fulfill us, if we want to do and create things in this life that change other people's lives and maybe even change the course of history, who knows? You're going to need energy to do it. And I single out three different types of energy. The first part is physical energy. It's pretty obvious. It's the energy that you have in your body based on the food that you eat, based on how you train yourself so that you can sustain a high level of effort all day long. The second level of energy is mental energy. And this one is particularly challenged in today's world because in order, what's mental energy? Well, mental energy is your ability to focus. It's your ability to pay attention. It's your ability to bring your mind back on track when it goes off track. It's also your ability to shape the way that you feel and the things that you think about. That's one of the things that determines the lowest performers from the highest performers. The lowest performers believe that their thoughts just appear or that they feel a certain way because that's the only way that you can feel in that circumstance. While the highest performers never leave any of those things to chance. They use systems so that they create their energy, they create the way that they feel, they create their thoughts, and in so doing, they give themselves tremendous doer's energy. And the final level of energy, the third level of energy, is spiritual energy. And I'm not talking about anything mystical here. You don't even have to believe in any form of higher power to understand that there is a spiritual energy that animates all of us. Just think about it this way. If the goals in your life, if the objectives in your life, and if the truth is, if, if the goals are small and the truth is missing and you're not facing it and you're not doing something that matters to you, then why should those animal spirits and why should that kind of magical energy that animates us when we're in flow and when we're doing what we really care about, why should you have that? Of course you won't. And so that's spiritual energy. Let's move on. Next point. So the next point is value. And it's incredible the extent to which the amount of value that you can bring to the table determines the size and the scope of your life very, very quickly. That's pretty obvious. But the, here's something that I have discovered over the course of building three eight-figure companies in the next, last 10 or 15 years. It's that there are certain skills and I have a name for it, I call it the independence skill set. And those skills are disproportionately valuable. As an adult, I've had the privilege of living for a year or more in four different countries, on four different continents, different languages, different religions, different cultures. And I can tell you that while all of those people were largely different, one thing wasn't different, which was that when you understand and can shape and control the laws that govern money and its acquisition, that skill will be disproportionately valuable anywhere that you go. And specifically, those skills have a lot to do with sales and marketing. And a lot of people don't like to do those things. And you know what? I invite you to find a little place in your heart to enjoy those things and to see them in a positive light because that, those are skills that other people are so hesitant to acquire and they shy away from them. And that's actually a wonderful opportunity. It's been for me my whole life and it's one for you right now. Value. And finally, the last one is clarity. So one of the best books that I've read in the last couple of years is by Greg McCowan and it's called Essentialism. And the whole gist of the book is pretty much the idea that 
everybody in our world today of social media and distraction is sacrificing the essential few for the trivial many. And this is the biggest mistake that you can make. You know, if you have disproportionate skills in one area because you've gotten clarity and you've decided, as Robert Greene says in his book, The 48 Laws of Power, the 23rd law, concentrate your forces. If you found a way to concentrate your forces towards the accomplishment of one goal, one big thing, and you know on a daily basis you're totally clear on what it is that you need to do, then what you'll realize is that you don't have to do a lot of things right, you just have to do one thing right. And if you do it over and over on a daily basis, all of the doors open and you get everything that you want. I'm sure that you've heard the proverb or motto or whatever you want to call it, jack of all trades, master of none. That's what everybody specializes in these days. But the jack of all trades never gets disproportionately rewarded. It's always the specialist, the master, the leader, and the way that you do that is by generating in your life extraordinary clarity. Before I end this video, I just want to take one moment to ask you to notice the following thing, which is that every single one of these items interacts with everything else. And every single one of these five also interact with the other five that I'm going to talk to you about in the next video. So the truth is that in order to 10x your life, and I really mean make it 10 times bigger so that you can be 10 times more popular, 10 times more good looking, 10 times richer, whatever it is that you want to accomplish, you don't have to take any one of those things and multiply them by 10. You just have to do a tiny little bit better in each one of them. And every time that you do, everything else is going to improve as well. And all of a sudden you're going to see that the pace at which you make progress in your life wildly accelerates because the way that you do one thing is the way that you do everything. And so learning these principles and living by them might be the most intelligent and valuable thing that you can ever do because it will influence the results that you get from every other minute of your life that you live. So if you can do these five, you'll have exactly 50% of what it takes to live an extraordinary life. And I'm going to give you the other five in the next video. So hey, thanks for listening. I'm Alex Goad, and I'm reminding you that today counts. So behave yourself accordingly. Thanks for watching.